We live in a diverse world full of different cultures, new ideas, fresh perspectives, and uniquely themselves people. But oftentimes, those who are seated around boardroom tables or walking up and down corporate halls don't reflect this same level of diversity. In Kobe Fuller's experience, this disconnection between what we see in our day-to-day -day lives versus what we witness in the antiquated world of business isn't necessarily due to a lack of desire to bridge the gap. It's more about the need for a more educated effort. There is this prominent corporate VC that I met with who had the aspirations to fund more black founders. And he then would say, I have no idea where to find them. So then I was like, okay, I get that, fine. You don't know how to find these founders. But then I started rattling off names of people, some very prominent individuals that given someone his vision, he should have known. And he's like, I have no idea who those people are. The problem is that you're not spending enough time interacting with the Black community and the networks by which you can actually tap into these people. Kobe is the co-founder of Valence and a general partner at Upfront Ventures. He's been involved in venture capital since college, and he regularly comes face to face with this problem of, I want to hire Black talent, but I don't know where to look. It's a multi-pronged issue that requires a multi-pronged solution, which is what Kobe is working toward at Valence, a network that he is helping build that connects, showcases, and empowers the global Black professional community. Building this community is not a typical nine to five job though. It's a massive undertaking that he's putting on his shoulders while still working as a full-time VC. So how does Kobe do it all? Balance the work needed to achieve this big vision with his daily responsibilities, while also prioritizing being a great husband and father. As Kobe shares today, it's all about mindset and focus. There are always exciting things happening in the world of small business. The news that grabs the headlines though, are always the highlights, the overnight successes, the billion dollar IPOs, the massive exits. But just like your Instagram feed, that's never the whole story. Let's look deeper than the headlines and the press photos. Underneath all of that is the real work building something valuable and lasting. Don't get me wrong, I love crazy success stories and can be drawn into those big flashy tales just as much as the next person. But we all know that what's more important than the destination is how you get there. It's the struggles you have to overcome and the insights you learn along the way that make you who you are. So those are the stories we're telling. It's raw, it's honest, and maybe it's exactly what you need to hear. I'm Hillary Georgie, and this is The Journey. Kobe grew up in a suburb of Boston called Milton. He had an early and fierce passion for basketball and had big dreams to play through high school and beyond. As a kid and teen, every spare second was spent on the court practicing, improving, and working toward that dream. When I was trying out for the freshman basketball team, the coach made this statement that if you were to make the team, you had to have two of three skills. The three skills were speed, heart, and skill. So we go through the whole week. I figure I got this nailed because I have clearly all three. So come Friday afternoon, he pulls in each kid one by one into an office and he pulls me in and he goes, hey, Kobe, I know I told you you needed to have two of three skills. Speed, you clearly are the fastest one on the court. Heart, you have the biggest heart, but you have no damn skills. So you're not going to make the basketball team. Kobe's dreams of playing in the pros were shattered. But as one door closes, another always opens. And for Kobe, that meant turning his attention to a new sport. It was actually partially due to that process where I realized, wait a minute, heart and speed, that's a good real winning combination for a track runner. I went on and I had a really good track career through high school, I ended up being captain of the Harvard track team, went on and ran post-collegiate for a number of years, and it actually serves as a key component of who I am today in terms of being able to just put in that hard work on the track and in the weight room and seeing the results come. The early experience of not making the basketball team taught him how to face failure, pivot, and bounce back. He learned that hard work may not always pay off how you envision it, but it does always pay off somehow. Running track taught him how to wield his competitive nature as a deadly weapon. That talent and drive didn't go unnoticed, 
and after high school, he went to Harvard, where he studied economics and continued to participate in and then later lead the track team. At Harvard, Kobe found his stride, honed in on his current skills and interests while also discovering new passions. How I actually got exposed to technology really for the first time, or at least the innovation economy, was through creating a startup during the late 90s with a buddy who was on the Jamaican junior national soccer team. And he had the idea around using the internet to connect players with recruiters. And I honestly don't even like soccer, but I thought it was a really cool idea. And we were able to raise a couple million in angel capital. And we were just a few kids running this company that became the number two traffic soccer site online. And, you know, we thought we were on top of the world. Business got sold for lots of money, but we didn't because thought it would be worth billions. And then everything kind of crashed during the early 2000s. And it was through that experience that I really fell in love with this whole idea of entrepreneurship and venture capital specifically. Kobe had set his sight on his next big dream to become a venture capitalist. But Kobe was young with limited applied experience in business, and there was no given career path for a young person like him in the world of venture capital. I literally sent physical letters to every Boston-based VC while I was a junior and early senior to try and find a way to start my career in the field. And there must have been at least 50 or so physical letters very few responses back. The responses were just like, hey kid, go and get some real experience and maybe we'll talk. But through persistence, I was able to navigate my way into the industry by joining a firm in New York called Inside Venture Partners a year out of school that recruits entry-level analysts that are pretty much in almost a boiler room of sorts, smiling and dialing, trying to convince CEOs to take their money. And that's kind of how I was able to find my way into my now career. It was the first rung on the ladder to a career he wanted. He realized that just like in sports, if he was willing to put in the time, practice, and think strategically, he could make the gains that he needed to move ahead. I knew that it was mainly a game of numbers, assuming you have a head on your shoulders. I just need to be organized around cold calling, cold email, cold outreach to all the best founders out there. And then once I do get them on the phone, I had to put my sales hat on and convince them to take money from a very reputable fund. But I'm like early 20s, really have no experience outside of this random soccer website and be compelling enough to pitch it. And I, I guess I was able to hone my salesmanship and I was doing over 20, 30 conversations a week, week in, week out for years. One of my first investments was a company called Exact Target that ultimately got acquired by Salesforce for a, a few billion dollars. Another company was a gaming company called RuneScape. The parent company there is called Jagex, that is still one of the most popular MMORPGs. And it was one where it was just constant persistence, very similar to how I conducted myself on the track, really putting in the effort, putting in the work, and seeing the results. Kobe saw every conversation as an opportunity to improve his methods, learn more about the industry, and further his career. He embraced a simple philosophy. There's no such thing as a dumb question. The dumbest question, in my opinion, is a question that's in your head that you don't ask. So I constantly was learning through others, learning by asking questions, asking questions from entrepreneurs, people that are on the bleeding edge of technology, trying to just innovate and disrupt those businesses that came before them, I learned from their journeys. And I wasn't afraid to ask the silliest question because that's what allowed me to grow and actually forms all the thoughts that are in my head today. Having gained initial experience in the industry, Kobe and a few of his coworkers decided to leave their firm in New York and start a new fund in Boston called OpenView. After a few years working there, Kobe was offered an opportunity to move cross country to LA and work alongside a few close friends at a fashion company called Revolve. There, he gained valuable experience in operations and marketing on the front lines. But ultimately, he knew his dreams were to be in venture capital. So after a few years, he left Revolve and joined Excel Partners in the Bay Area before shifting to his current role at Upfront. After the break, Kobe shares his inspiration for breaking away from typical roles in venture capital to become a founder. And he dives into his long-term vision for Valence. 
Plus, he shares his cheat codes for optimizing his time every day and why mindset is the ultimate differentiator. It takes a lot to grow a business, but one thing's for certain. You've got to have a laser focus on the customer. That's why we use Salesforce Essentials at Mission every day. With Essentials, your small business has access to the same CRM tools driving results for some of the most successful companies on earth. Think Adidas, Amazon, T-Mobile, Toyota, Intuit, Marriott, and tens of thousands more. Track your business health by measuring sales, emails, customer satisfaction, and custom metrics. Go to getessentials.com slash the journey to start your free 90 day trial today. During the years Kobe has spent working in venture capital, helping launch, fund, and mentor businesses, one problem always stood out. There's this imbalance in terms of the percentage of capital that goes to black founders. Less than 1% goes to black founders, actually, to be precise. And if you think about also the number of Fortune 500 black CEOs, there's only three. And this is something that can't persist if we're trying to drive clear economic change and close the, the wealth gap that exists within America. Being a black man, these are themes, these are experiences that are not foreign to me. It's just things that you grow up seeing and, and it's living through both personally and professionally. There was this day in which we as a firm made the decision to put an inclusion clause in our term sheets, which really pushed our founders to consider and interview individuals from underrepresented backgrounds for any senior leadership position they were hiring for. And then I realized as we decided to make that decision, which I think is a, again, a good decision to do and help shine a light on the problem. It still didn't help solve the problem where lots of people were still saying this one statement to me or others, which is like, I'd love to hire more black talent, but I have no idea where to find them. And it was interesting to see that some people would come to me and say, hey, I want to hire there'd be a black VP of sales, black engineer, black CMO. You're black, you probably know every black professional on the planet. It's like, no, not really. Like contrary to popular belief, we all don't know one another. So then I had this idea around why wouldn't there be just a highly visualized database of black talent that could take that issue off the table. It was an idea that stuck and one that quickly grew into a passion project. During the day, Kobe worked at Upfront Ventures as a VC. And in his free time, he began to draw up plans for this database that he envisioned. And I realized as I was coming up with this idea that if this database existed, this platform itself could serve the black community so much more. It could be a product that puts them first because, like I said, contrary to popular belief, we all don't know one another. We're in these silos with the alumni associations, ERGs, or random groups that someone may have put together in their local town or city. And I thought if we could actually create a place by which we unite all these organizations, all these individuals, and allow them to better discover, connect, find, build, and mentor with one another, that could be a very, very, very special place. Kobe's idea grew beyond a database and into what he believed could become a vibrant community. I wanted to create an experience that was more than just the sterile list. It needed to have a brand soul. It needed to drive emotion, not too dissimilar to some of the tactics I was doing at Revolve with you know, influencer marketing and prioritization of UI, design, photography. But I had this idea around, let me try to present the community through this lens that's never really been done before, at least for the professional segment. And it was through superheroes and through superhero stories and narratives and literally photographing a subset of the community as though they were superheroes, where I wanted you to come to the site called valence. Valence is a chemical term meaning combined power, where you'd be emotionally driven, inspired by these individuals. So that if you are, say, someone very young in your journey, a la little Kobe, and you're going through your Instagram feed and you see this amazing visual, this amazing image that then pulls you into this experience where you never before knew there's someone that looked like you that potentially had a similar experience 
that is now on the board of Facebook and helping run PayPal, you realize that potentially that could be you and that helps drive your journey, drive your path in a way that potentially may not have been done before. Leveraging his knowledge and experience in tech, Kobe began to build out a platform to support what he called Valence. Valence began to grow into a thriving and promising business and to support getting it off the ground, he and his partners at Upfront committed a million dollars of incubation capital. That was last year, and today Valence has 11,000 black professionals on the platform. The platform is intentionally designed in a way where you hopefully can connect, build, and find others to help you get to that path through structured micro-mentorship as well as virtual events and hopefully physical events soon that helps demystify the professional advancement pathways. So at some point when you do achieve that success, you get to that point and then you are compelled to then reach back and then ideally then this whole full circle of life, we celebrate you similarly through the spotlight program and then you inspire the next generation to follow your footsteps. Using one-on-one -on -one meetings that they call boosts and weekly events to connect people and share advice or what Kobe likes to call cheat codes, Valence is creating a community to drive lasting change, one connection at a time. We need to be talking not in millions, but in billions. So why couldn't there be 10 black billionaires across 10 cities? And in my opinion, if we leverage this platform to create black billionaires all across the country, what that potentially could solve in terms of the wealth that's created within those geographies, those ecosystems, where those billionaires give back, they invest in those communities, and they drive change. The millionaires that can actually be driven off of those folks, like why aren't we thinking about that? So if Valence can produce, it's in my lifetime, that amount of wealth that then gets disseminated throughout the entire Black community, that's something which I'd love for us to aspire to do long term, and it's an overarching, I'd say North Star, the guards of what we're trying to drive home here, that affects the entire Black community. So how does Kobe do it all? How does he put in the time, energy, and mental bandwidth needed to build out Valence while still maintaining his day job and caring for a family at home? A lot of the struggles I find personally are those that are you fighting yourself. And it's those moments where I think many people have to take a step back and decide one or two things. They can either give in to that negativity that usually drives into some dour spiral that causes many folks to actually give up? Or can they tap into that resilience and that grit and really kind of focus their mindset towards optimizing towards whatever goal they're trying to achieve? And first and foremost, it's really trying to take a step back and realize like, what is the goal? What are you trying to achieve and why? Like, why do you want that? And then what are the blockers towards getting that goal and being very conscious of those blockers and then realizing Anytime those things that spur negativity come to light, being conscious of what those things are and create real-time action plans and resolutions towards those blockers. You can be your biggest enemy, so don't weaponize yourself against yourself. For Kobe, the number one method for success is his mindset. He says that you need to stay focused on your why, but you also have to stay positive every step of the way because that is what will power you through the hardest days. But cultivating that mindset and mental fortitude isn't easy. For Kobe, it means being incredibly intentional with and protective of your time. I just try to be really lethal with my time and knowing how to prioritize and being okay and comfortable with those things that you're frankly not going to be able to do. I'm maniacal around getting in a workout and investing in my own personal health and wellness so that I actually have the energy to make it through the day. So there's certain things that I hold sacred in terms of mind, body, and soul, because if you don't have that, you become, I think, rotten and not able to actually achieve things. So there's these kind of bookends that I adhere to formally in any given day. And then I try to be lethal with my time during the middle of the day. Kobe knows that he is still taking baby steps with Valence. They've only just gotten going, but he knows that with the right people, mindset, focus, and hard work, Valence is on its way to becoming a powerful solution to a deeply rooted problem. It just becomes a living, breathing organism that with some guidance and some just curating and some massaging, so it makes sure it actually grows into the right organism you want it to be, just starts creating amazing life. And that's a lot of what's been happening with Valence. This is something we launched not even a year ago. 
that's now 11,000 people strong with a lot of great things happening. There is an old adage from self-help author Robert Collier that says, quote, success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Kobe's success has grown and evolved as he has, and he's been able to become a strong person, leader, and entrepreneur through repeated effort. His focus, routines, and mindset has created a loop that feeds itself. Just like in business or in personal life, creating lasting and meaningful change in society happens when there are systems in place for that change to encourage and perpetuate forward movement. And when there is an entire community built around carrying that movement forward, the chances for real change happening get better with each new member of the community who is willing to put in the effort Kobe knows all too well. Succeeding as a startup, solo founder, or any small business is an uphill battle. It takes the right mindset and the right tools. That's why we're thrilled to partner with Salesforce Essentials to bring you the journey. Managing one podcast, let alone a whole media studio, is a challenge to say the least. But Essentials makes it easy to maintain relationships and grow our business. With Essentials, your startup has access to the same CRM driving insights and results for the most successful companies in the world. Use unrivaled Salesforce technology to track customers, sales, emails, and more. You'll know where your business is and where it's headed as you chart the path for your journey. We love using Essentials and we know you will too. Go to getessentials.com slash the journey to start your free 90-day trial today.